Um, what I'm going to talk about today is just, in general terms, uh, what is needed to address the, the, the climate crisis. Um, and this is the thing that, if, 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 we, if we do, what actions can we take that, that will accelerate the transition out of uh, the fossil fuel era? Um, so th there's a certain amount of carbon that is circulating through the environment. So it's going into the air, being absorbed by, and then get, getting absorbed by plants and animals, um, and then going back into the air. And this, this carbon is just circulating on the surface. Um, and this, this is fine, and it's been doing that for millions, hundreds of millions of years. Uh, the, the thing that's changed is that we've added something to the mix. So this is what I would call the, the sort of the, the turd in the punch bowl. Um, so the, we added all this extra carbon to, to the carbon cycle, and the net result is that uh, the, the, the carbon in the ocean's atmosphere is growing over time. It's much more than can be absorbed by the ecosystem. It's, it, it's really, it's really qu quite simple. We're taking uh, billions of tons of carbon that's been buried for hundreds of millions of years um, and is not part of the carbon cycle, taking it from deep underground and adding it to the carbon cycle. The result is that a steady increase in the, the carbon in the atmosphere and in the ocean, oceans, which doesn't look like much if you look at it on this chart, but when looked at in the context of, of history, it actually looks like this. So the, the carbon parts per million has really been bouncing around the 300 level for around 10 million years. Um, and then in the last few hundred years, it went into a vertical climb. This, this is the, the essence of the problem. This is very unusual um, and, and, a, and a very, very extreme threat, as you can see from, from this rate of growth. Then this is accompanied by uh, a temperature increase, as one would expect. And, uh, and, 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 this, and this temperature increase, you know, people talk about two degrees or, or three degrees. It's important to appreciate just how sensitive the, the climate actually is to, uh, to temperature. And it's important to look at it in terms of absolute temperature, not um, in degrees Celsius relative to zero. We need to say, what is the temperature change relative to absolute zero? That's how the universe thinks about temperature. It's how physics thinks about temperature. It's, it's relative to absolute zero. So, uh, for, for small changes result in, in huge effects. Uh, so, New York City under ice would be minus five degrees. New York City under water would be plus five degrees. But looked at in, in a, as a percentage relative to absolute zero, it's only a plus minus two percent change. So, the the sensitivity of the climate is extremely, extremely high. Um, we've amplified this sensitivity by building our cities right on the, on the coastline. And most, uh, it, it, most people live very close to, to the ocean. There are some countries, of course, that are, that are very low-lying and would be completely uh, underwater in, 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 a, in a climate crisis. So, the, 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 we've essentially designed civilization to be super sensitive to climate change. The, the, the important thing to appreciate is that we are going to exit the fossil fuels era. So it, it, is, it is inevitable that we will exit the fossil fuels era because at a certain point we will simply run out of uh, carbon to mine and burn. So the question is really, when, when do we exit the era, not, not if? The goal is to exit the era as quickly as possible. That means we need to move from, from the old goal, uh, with the pre-industrial goal, goal, which was to move from uh, chopping down forests and uh, killing lots of whales. Um, that the old goal was to move from, from chopping wood and, and killing whales to uh, fossil fuels, which actually, in that context, was a good thing. But the new goal is to move to a, a sustainable energy future. And we want to use things like uh, hydro, solar, wind, geothermal. Nuclear is also a, a good option in um, places like France, which don't, aren't subject to natural disasters. Um, and, and we want to use energy sources that will be good for, for a billion years.
So how do we accelerate this transition away from fossil fuels to a sustainable era? And, 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 and what happens if we don't? So if we, if we wait, uh, and if we delay the change, um, the, best case, the, 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 the best case is, is, is simply delaying that inevitable transition to sustainable energy. So this is the, this is the best case if we don't take action now. Um, at the risk of being repetitive, it's, w there, there's going to be no choice in the long term to move to sustainable energy. It's, it's tautological. We have to have sustainable energy or we'll simply run out of the other one. So the, the only thing we gain by slowing down the transition is, is, is just slowing it down. It doesn't, doesn't make it not occur, it just slows it down. The worst case, however, is more displacement and destruction than all the wars in history combined. Okay, this is, these, are, these are the best worst case scenarios. So then, we have you know, about 3% of scientists that believe in the best case, and about 97% that believe in the worst case. This is why I call it the dumbest experiment in history, ever. Like, why would you do this? <laughs> so the, the, the reason that the, the, the transition is delayed or, or, or is happening slowly is because there is a hidden subsidy on all carbon producing activity. In a healthy market, if you have, say, 10 euros of benefit, and four euros of harm to society, the profit would be six euros. This sort of you know, makes obvious sense. This is where the incentives are aligned with a good future. This is not, this is not the case today. Um, but if you have the incentives aligned, then the forcing function towards a, a, a good future, towards a sustainable energy future, will be powerful. In an unhealthy market, you have your 10 euros of benefit, if you have four euros, but the four euros doesn't, isn't taxed. So you have an un, untaxed negative externality. This is basically economics 101. So you have basically unreasonable profit and a forcing function to, uh, to do carbon emitting activity. Because this, this, this cost to society is not being paid. The net result is 35 gigatons of carbon per year into the atmosphere. So this is analogous to not paying for garbage collection. Um, and it's, it's not as though we, sh we should say, in the case of garbage, have a garbage-free society. It's very difficult to have a garbage-free society. But it's just important that people pay for the garbage collection. So we need to go from having an untaxed negative externality, which is effectively a hidden carbon subsidy of enormous size, uh, $5.3 trillion a year, according to the IMF, every year. Um, we need to move away from this uh, and, 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 and have a carbon tax. So, but, but this, is being, this is being fought quite hard by the, uh, the, the carbon producers. Um, and they're using tactics that are very similar to what the uh, cigarette industry or the tobacco industry used for many years. Um, they, would, they would take the approach of having, of, of, even though the overwhelming scientific consensus was that uh, smoking cigarettes was bad for you, uh, they would find a few scientists that would disagree, and then they would say, look, scientists disagree. So that, that, that's essentially how they would try to trick the public into thinking that smoking is not that bad. The solution, obviously, is to remove the subsidy. Uh, so that means we, we need to have a, a, a carbon tax, and to make it sort of something which is neither a left nor a right issue, we should make it a, probably a revenue-neutral carbon tax. So this would be a case of increasing taxes on carbon, but then re reducing taxes in, in other places. So maybe there would be a reduction in sales tax or VAT, and an increase in carbon tax, so that uh, only those using high levels of carbon would pay an increased tax. And moreover, this, I mean, in, in order to give uh, industry time to react, uh, this could be a phased-in approach. So that uh, maybe it takes five years before the, the carbon taxes are very high, 
So that means that only companies that don't take action today will suffer in five years. But there needs to be a clear message from, from government in this regard. The, the, because the fundamental problem is the rules today incent people to create carbon. And th this is madness. And whatever you incent will happen. That, that's why you know, we're, we're seeing little, very little effect uh, thus far. And depending upon how, what, what action we take, we'll, we'll, we'll drive the, the carbon number to either extreme or, or moderate levels. Um, I, I think it's pretty much a given that, that the two degree C increase will occur. The question is whether it's going to be much more than that, N not if there will be a two degree uh, increase. Um, so the, then the question is, so what can you do? I would say whenever you have the opportunity, talk to your politicians, ask them to enact a carbon tax. We, ha we have to fix the unpriced externality. I would talk to your friends about it and fight the propaganda from the carbon industry. So that, that's the basic message I have, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.